Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. So this is used bee decking. Um, typically it's used underneath roofs in commercial buildings or as a subfloor structure in commercial buildings. In this case, uh, when it was used as a floor, it was rated for 125 pounds per square foot loading. And it was spaced at eight foot intervals, which happens to be the intervals of my fence posts. Uh, I chose that interval because they are 24 feet long and I could, you know, just overlap them. And uh, then it would be easy. Uh, not this many posts were necessary. I could easily go with a 12 foot span. Um, however, the posts I found for cheap on Craigslist were only 1 16th inch thick. And I just didn't feel very confident with the posts, so that's why I spaced the posts at eight foot centers. So theoretically, the amount of labor involved could be saved significantly with a bee decking fence, so long as your soil can support the wind loading. The Every place around the country will have a wind design load. Uh, around here, it's like 85 or 90 miles an hour. Here is a wind load and pressure chart. Now that's the loading on one side, but there's a vacuum on the other side, so common practice is to double it. Now rain will affect that value. So just assume at 200 miles an hour, you have 200 pounds per square foot acting upon your fence. So design the depth of your fence posts and the strength of everything to work around that. Now this is only rated for 125 per square foot, so that's only for given a certain amount of bending force. It can definitely handle way, way more than that. It can handle, this is a trailer floor. I use this as a floor for my trailer and I've had very heavy, like, high point loads on this stuff and it has not failed. In fact, this stuff is so tough that uh, about three or four inches into the cut, even though it's only 18 gauge and my Harbor Freight uh, metal shears are rated for 18 gauge, the blades died after about three inches. So it's it's a high strength steel that this bee decking is often made out of. However, it may not be the case for you. Now the lifting it up was fairly obvious. Each of these panels is like 240 pounds. Uh, very awkward for one person to handle. That's why I recommend like 20 or 22 gauge. They should be fine for almost anywhere except maybe Miami-Dade or places with like vehicular traffic that you can count on uh, ramming your fence or something. So step one is definitely to have all your fence posts already in the ground. Personally, I used six bags of concrete per post. The hard pan is about 33 inches down. I didn't really go past the hard pan, so I just made it a little wider so that uh, it could hold up to the winds and everything. And propped it up with these specially cut boards, just wedged against the ground, and that gave me my levels. Um, the props are at the fence posts pretty much, so there isn't a whole lot of bending force against the posts, and the posts lie pretty flat against the bee decking. And then I put one self-drilling screw through either uh, post at the top, just to make it more stable, at least in some cases, maybe in some cases I didn't bother. But then I would drill with a drill a specific diameter of hole, and you see that there? That is an air-based rivet gun. I did these following rivets by hand, and the second rivet completely destroyed my rather high-strength uh, handheld rivet gun. It takes like uh, a ton or two tons of force to pull the rivet through, and um, my handheld tool just couldn't do it. I'm using 3 16th stainless rivets, which I got really cheap on eBay. Uh, the cost per fence panel is pretty much nominal. By the way, uh, you can expect to pay about 75 cents to a dollar per square foot for new stuff on eBay. However, shipping will be up to you because uh, it typically comes in long sheets like 18 to 24 feet. These are 24 foot panels. The pullout value of the rivets is very high. Um, I think that they probably are stronger than screws. so. That's one reason why I used it. Another reason why I used rivets is for some reason I was worried about theft, but that's pretty silly. 
I found mine used on Craigslist for about 75 cents per square foot. That is cheaper than the high maintenance piece of shit wood stuff that they sell. It's the cheapest high strength rivet gun I could find, and uh, so it leaves some desirability in its functionality. Multiple trigger pulls, and uh, my first one died, uh, so I recommend not keeping, if you buy a rivet gun, I recommend not keeping it constantly hooked up to air, like overnight. Um, my little plunger disintegrated. This is a self-drilling 410 stainless screw. They were pretty cheap on eBay. About $1.30 a pound. That's aluminum that I've bent. Um, I'm covering up these gaps at the bends in the fence, and the edges have a tendency to rust, um, especially cut edges. So this hides those rusted points. Overlap top over bottom so that water flows over the crack or whatever. Now this is a post cap, keep the rainwater out, and I have to jam this piece of aluminum in between the fencing and the pulse, so I kind of, I couldn't fit it in there because the rivet is pretty much totally stuck there, so I had to cut that little. Now this is how I do uh, individual bags of concrete. I personally recommend getting a concrete truck uh, because I recommend having a curb and having continuous concrete and rebar along the bottom of your fence so that dogs can't dig through it and so that uh, grass doesn't grow up into your fence and make it rusty and become a problem. Now this concrete mix, the reason I'm mixing it is because I'm going to put it inside the fence posts. Remember it's only 1 16th inch wall uh, stuff, or maybe a little thicker. And that's a funnel. Some, the poles are different diameters between like 3.5 and, and 5 inches. And then that is like a drain for the ground. I guess it goes in like commercial showers or something. But I'm pouring the concrete into those. Now there is rebar mixed in there. So it helps reinforce the structure like more so than just simple concrete. And it will help keep the concrete from cracking too far apart. Um, I'm just not sure if these posts can handle the winds, so I'm going to reinforce them. At the corner posts, uh, I'm not going to fill them up as high as I do the other posts because I'm thinking about maybe like adding extra posts inside the posts later for the sake of security cameras or solar lights or who knows what. And it's really awkward to climb a ladder with a bucket of concrete, so just bear that in mind. And then to pour a concrete in that thing, that's really awkward. That's the most awkward part. So it's more durable and long-lasting than the vinyl fencing. It is just as private. Um, it is more or less durable than the $300 per 8-foot section Trex stuff that you find at Home Depot. And uh, it's a lot easier, a lot lighter weight. Two panels together, if you don't cut the tops off, do overlap to about 6 foot 2 inches. So you're generally over by about 2 inches the maximum non-permitted fence, but I don't think anybody's going to bother you about it. And basically it's about as cheap as you can get for a privacy fence. It's on par with the other cheapest options, except the longevity is there. And if you're really concerned about maintenance in 20 or 30 years, then you can find aluminum or stainless bee decking. And another option is to get like salvaged wood off of Craigslist. Definitely use metal poles, but you can use wood in between and then um, if you want privacy, then you can have like stainless or aluminum surplus. You can go to aaluminum.com and get aluminum for like a buck a square foot, and you will never have to maintain that, uh, never paint it or anything. It's just going to be a lot of labor to shape the aluminum and to like bend it over all of the wood members, but your costs could be the same or lower with that uh, non-existent maintenance if uh, that is your ultimate concern. But the amount of labor, again, is really, really discouraging. Now, don't let all, let all that labor go to waste. If there's an area that is prone to vehicular traffic, like at some corners on some fences, man, that's bad. And as you might have saw, there were some workers who were 
nearby the fence, and they had previously impacted the corner posts. It is usually those corner posts that get hit. And they drive around with a big old trailer with a bobcat on it, and uh, your post has to be really tough to resist that. So maybe quarter inch wall or thicker, uh, maybe 12 inch diameter. Just find some pole somewhere and just fill it up with concrete and rebar. So when they jam their vehicle into your uh, bollard, they're going to feel it, and you're not. <laughs>